Using libraries is much different than computing algorithms from scratch. Libraries are highly optimized, and because of this they have implementations that may deviate from the original algorithm. While they may be similar, it's important to understand this and investigate the implementation if needed. In fact, tuning a library implementation can actually be more difficult than tuning your own implementation. In this video, we will learn how to use OpenCV's implementation of the Harris Corner Detector and tune it on a few test images. We will find out what each hyperparameter does and how to tune them for your own application. So let's get started. So here are the test images that we're going to tune on. And we're going to apply feature detection to these bricks. And in this case, we have a lot of corners. In this case, we have some corners. We can see that the lighting isn't so good and they're not, you know, not exactly very strongly defined in this image, even though they're strongly defined in real life. And in this final image, we don't really have any corners. We have some stuff that might appear as corners due to the lighting and shadows. But the only actual quote-unquote corners we have are come from this wood right here. And otherwise, we might have some issues because we don't have any perfect corners right here. We have a lot of sharp corners. And as we saw previously in part one, that the Harris corner detector might fail in cases of sharp corners. And we'll try to investigate this more on this actual image right here. So let, let's scroll up and go to this pipeline right here. So we have our Harris corner detector pipeline. And so we take in, we take in an image and it's grayscale version. It's just a, just a test pipeline. We have our hyperparameters for the Harris corner detector. We have the block size, which defines the window size for the Gaussian smoothing. But in fact, and the Harris corner detector algorithm uses Gaussian smoothing, but OpenCV uses a block filter, which is just any, any type of smoothing will actually work. So it's not going to make that big of a difference. I'm not actually sure why they don't use a Gaussian smoothing. Maybe the block filter works better. So K size is the kernel size or aperture size for the Sobel operator where we take the image derivatives or image gradients. K is the hyperparameter for computing the corner response. And just to see what the corner response is, it's up here. It is the, the product, this product of derivatives and plus this adding the horizontal and vertical product of derivatives. So if you don't know what those are, I will link an article in the bio and link the previous video. Both of those will give you a better understanding of what the corner detector is in theory, we're going to focus more on the application using OpenCV. So, so in this function, I also have a bonus where we could add noise, and we'll study this a little bit later and see what this does and see how we could tune these parameters to be more resilient against a simple added noise. So the, fir the first step right here is we compute the Harris corner response using our OpenCV function. Uh, next, we could dilate it. This seems to make things work better. It helps us with the centroiding process that we could use in the non-maximal suppression. We'll see that below. Next, we're going to threshold it and just get the get the strong responses over a certain threshold. And then we're going to start the non-maximal suppression process right here. So I'm just going to comment on maximal suppression. So Right here, we're going to use this um, connect components with stats function. And that is right here. Basically, this just provi like provides us with the centroids and decibel form of all the points that we find. And next, we're going to get these down, refine these um, decimal centroids down to subpixel accuracy. So, of course, in a pixel, we don't have decimal index locations. So this right here, corner subpix is just going to get them to the nearest pixel. And that's what we're doing right here. And this gives us an array of indexes for our corners. And now we're just going to draw the detected corners on the image right here. So we're going to create a copy of the image because I don't want to draw them on the original image because I want to use this function multiple times. And we're just going to iterate through the corners, draw them on the image with the OpenCV circle function. And I'm going to return the array of corners and the image. So that being done, let's go through this and test this on a couple of cases. And let's look at the impact that each hyperparameter has on the function. So right here we have the impact of K. So we're going to get our baseline hyperparameters right here. Block size of 2, kernel size of 3, no noise, and a K of 0 0.5. 
So as, as you might have seen in the previous image, a larger K makes us less sensitive to the point. So that, that's a pretty extreme value right here. We only get one corner, and it's, it's going to be centered when we use this large K. But I, I find that using extreme values really illustrates the effect of the hyperparameter. So normally when I tune hyperparameters, I want to find out what a hyperparameter does. When I Even if I haven't di dived into the theory yet, I'm just looking at a high level, I usually use extremely high or extremely low values to get a sense of what the hyperparameter does and then I narrow in to a more reasonable range to kind of get a feel for it and also I usually only tune one at a time just to make things easier once I get a feel for what each hyperparameter does by tuning one at a time only then do I start tuning two or three or four at a time until once I get a feel for it so let's see what a small do, small one does and if you have d taken a dive into the theory, you should know that it makes it more sensitive to more corners. We get a bunch of corners. And in this case right here, we get some stuff that's not really corners. We get stuff that's along the edges that we don't want. Is there a bat that's bad for this image? But in this case, we actually get more corners along these trusses right here. It turns out that these lights have a very, the way this image was captured, probably with a longer exposure, we get this glare from the lights and we get corners on this glare. That's not good if we're using a video, but we probably won't take images with long exposure in video. Now in this case right here, we don't really have any corners right here. So we get a bunch of junk corners, you know, from the lighting more than likely. And we do get some stuff in the wood. I expect we have this, you know, this mark right here in the wood. I expect that these two corners are probably the only one of the only actual corners we would get in this image. So let's take it to a more reasonable level and just investigate what something like this does so so once again sa same thing so in reality if I want a good just by tuning this I'm probably gonna take this a little bit higher and still too many right here this right here I'm okay with this is kinda ridiculous so I'm gonna take both of these higher just to get a better response and I'm just gonna try to see what I could do with one one hyperparameter to get a good response so here's still too many corners and we're starting to looks like we're missing some we might want to start looking at tuning other hyperparameters and this right here I'm just gonna yeah it doesn't look like there's much we could do with that It's not a good, this image really isn't a good case for corner detection. We still get some, it seems like an all or nothing type thing. So I'm going to leave this alone and I'm also going to, I'll leave my last attempt on this. I want to tune other hyperparameters for this. So, okay, so I'll, I'll leave, go ahead and leave this alone. And let's move on to, and see the impact of the Sobel kernel size. So there's some, there's some things we need to know. The Sobel kernel is used to compute the image gradients. And per the OpenCV documentation, it says the kernel size must be 1, 3, or 7. So we will only use those values. And if we set the Sobel kernel to 0, we will use a char, it'll use a char operator. But I'm not going to get into that in this video. You can experiment with that on your own. So a large kernel, basically it distills gradient information from a larger area. And it ends up reducing the total number of detected corners and a smaller kernel will provide more localized gradient information and give us more detected corners. So let's see how this impacts the entire process. But first, we want to just compute some Sobel kernels on a test image. So we're going to use a kernel size of 1 and compute it on this middle rocket image. So right here, we have the scale for the Sobel kernel. And if we go to the Sobel kernel, you can see here's the documentation in OpenCV and we can see the scale is a scale factor for the computed derivatives and we could see from the documentation if we go to the github for for OpenCV we can look and see that the scale is actually going to depend on the kernel size through this so I have a 
Python version right here. This is C++. So we're going to do subtract 1 from the kernel size, unless it's 0. We're going to bit shift 1, and then we're going to multiply by the box size. So it turns out if we have a kernel of 1, we get a scale of 2. Kernel of 3, we get a scale of 8, 5. And this ends up giving us basically a, str a much stronger response each time. So we get this ridiculous response here. It looks very saturated. So I'm expecting if we have a large kernel, we might not get good performance. It seems like three is a nice trade-off. One doesn't really give us anything. Let's see what happens. We have kernel size is three, so here's our baseline. So let's let's do the extreme value of seven and see what happens. So right here we can see the number of corners, 194, 52, 46. And we get much more when we go up to three. So let's just try it one, see if we get a significant amount of points. We get this, you know, this is not good right here. This thing right here, so it looks like a no noisy, noisy point. This one looks pretty good. This one just awful. And you can see that we're actually detecting edges right here of the spoon. We're detecting something from the lighting right here. I have no idea how that's getting detected. And we're still getting this nice from the strong, possibly getting some strong responses from this part of the wood right here. And you can see if we're, where the lighting's good, we're getting strong responses here. Let's go. Let's see how using the kernel size of five impacts this. And we get better responses, still a noisy response. So it seems like using the kernel size for the Harris corner detector is not going to give us a good, or using it alone is not going to allow us to tune this thing by itself. At least it seems like we're going to need to use that in a combination. It seems like K is going to be, for the most part, K is going to be your main hyperparameter to tune. But let, let's dive into block size. And so right here, so block size is really is really gonna give us a the ability to to um, reduce noise. So if we have a noisy image or noisy or the noise could come from many sources, maybe it's a bunch of features that you don't want to detect. The block size can reduce the noise. So this function right here. So larger values will make the corners less localized. So let, let's see the impact of that right here. And it's especially apparent on the bricks. So let's go back to a box size of two and look on the bricks. So we have a bunch of corners right here. You can see that we have a corner and you know, a corner for this bottom brick, corners for this top brick. But what if we don't really care about all that? We just want to know where the bricks start and stop. We can use a larger block size to kind of zoom out and get a higher, you know, a very um, less localized detection. And you can see that right here. We can see, you know, we got a no little bit of noise right there, but we can see where they start and stop. And you can see it doesn't have a very pronounced effect on this, but you can see where the these lights are. You can see we only get one corner detected where these glare from the lights are. But if we go to the baseline response, we get multiple corners on each of these rays of the glare. And once we go here, we could see that we're even we're detecting on the shadows, which is not good, but we still get the strong response in the wood. Now as a bonus, let's see what the noise does. So right here, we have the noise. And, note, and just, just note that this noise right here, this effect right here kind of looks like some pixie dust or whatever it's it's because the uint 8 is rolling over and i'm not not too worried about that but you can see what this noise does is we actually detect probably possibly because of the rollover we're detecting truss uh, trusses up here the lighting's not so great um, this doesn't really affect this brick wall right here we have a lot of good responses so i actually actually like that setting right there I will probably reduce that, but you can see 
doesn't really have much of an effect on this truss, except we get more. But in general, if we're looking to reduce the noise that we get, we can apply the block size. And you can see we get a ton of stuff in here. So this is very, the block size parameter is very pronounced when we have this noise right here. And as we move it back to something like 12, we could actually get rid of all those noisy corners due to the noise. So I think at this point, I hope you have a better understanding of what each of these hyperparameters does, what they mean, and how they can be used in conjunction on your own images to be able to apply feature detection with the Harris Corner detection.